All right, next up is layer six uh, of the OSI 7 layer model, and it is the creating of secure connections. So the presentation layer is responsible for a number of um, things. It's also known as the syntax layer because it's responsible for the serialization or encoding of complex data structures into what they call flat byte streams, the compression of said data, and the encryption of data streams. So it's handling a lot of this sort of stuff. So it's the presentation of information, so making it um, highly compressed so it can travel across the internet fairly quickly. Uh, so the first one I really want to touch on here is the encoding of the data. Um, what I've included here is uh, the old American ASCII code chart. And the particular elements I want to pick out for you is basically, instead of mathematically defining every symbol and that sort of stuff, what's being done is it's been simplified into a 7-bit ASCII code. Um, now the B1234 is across the side here and the 789 is across the top. The reason this one's been broken down in this particular fashion is that uh, I want to pick out two particular elements. One is that all the numbers range from um, a zero with a zero one one and then lots of zeros all the way through to zero one one and then a bunch of things and then this binary number here adds up to nine and that goes from zero to nine down the side here. Um, but the more interesting case here is the actual letters. A is uh, from memory 62, no it must be 61, because it's that, which is actually a 64 plus one, so 65, yeah. And this one is actually 93, and the difference is a single bit to convert from uppercase to lowercase, and it's one of the, the smart things they did. Now as this um, encoding set has gotten larger, and we've dealt with uh, more complicated languages, uh, a collection of a larger collection of symbols. Uh, encoding standards have been expanded. There was the 8-bit ASCII and a whole bunch of other ones that I can't remember off the top of my head. Uh, but UTF-8 uh, and UTF-16, which are now the international standards, that encode pretty much all the characters around the world. Finally, or secondly, there's compression. Now, the process of compression is basically making it less occupy less bits than necessary than it did uh, there's two forms lossy and lossless um, the lossy is used for uh, audio video and images and if you're dealing with text it's generally going to be lossless uh, because text require look at an with an image you can look at it and as long as it a photo looks about right your brain will interpret the rest and it's fine same with sound same with video but with text because it's already reasonably well compressed, um, it has to be lossless. And this example on the screen here is um, a classic quote from uh, by Shakespeare, to be or not to be, that is the question, where each of those symbols can be swapped out for um, the actual words, thereby compressing that piece of text. So here's another example. Uh, pause the video at this point. Uh, give it a go at trying to solve it, um, but you can see what's going on here. Um, and I will wait for a second, and then I'll move on. So the next one is encryption. Uh, encryption basically is the process of converting plain text, or something you can easily read, into ciphertext and back again using a special encryption key. Now the encryption key will usually have a mathematical way of encrypting the stuff, and a way, a, a number or a phrase or, or something that allow you to encrypt it and decrypt it. The way this is done is through ba two basic techniques. The first is through what they call substitution, where you substitute um, one number for another number or one letter for another letter. Uh, the classic one of this one is the old Caesar cycle or the code wheels, where you'd rotate it and you'd, you'd basically do the code based on that shifted value and then you only needed to remember the number to know how many places you needed to rotate the wheel. The second is transposition. This is where you change the place of characters in the sequence. So if you take a, a sentence and swap every, every pair of letters, just swap the, swap the position of them, you can then convert uh, plain text into encrypted text. 
Um, obviously, that's a little easy to decipher, but these two techniques in combination are basically the foundation of how the modern computer-based ciphers work. In general, there are two types of keys, the symmetric key and the public key, and these are used to basically work out to encode and decode the message. So a symmetric key is the same thing that's applied to encode and decode, and public private key encryption has two sets of keys, one public, one private. The public key is the one you give out. And basically what happens with this one is you can have a message um, encrypted with the, pri with the public key, and then you can get your private key, and that's the only one that can unlock it. And um, that's used uh, across the world these days. Um, now, I've also put a note that this can actually happen across multiple layers, and you can see them all listed down the bottom there. Um, the other thing with public and private key encryption is it's also the basis of online certification. So certificates to basically confirm that, that a website is who it says it is. Um, I haven't got anything on encryption, uh, sorry, on certificates here, computer-based certificates, but I can cover it in class. All right, so this sort of stuff with the encryption of, of information does suffer from the man in the middle attack. So if you have someone um, who's able to intercept the messages um, and then read them before they get to the destination, then you have a definite problem. Um, so obviously what tends to happen is you get encryption. So you can have an encoded or encrypted channel that will stop the person in the middle reading your messages going back and forth. Um, it is worth noting that SMSs, um, emails, and telnet are not encrypted. So anybody reading that stuff can actually um, basically read those messages. Um, and that's all I really want to talk about with this one. I'll go into a lot more detail. Um, there's a lot more things out there you need to be aware of. Um, but basically, VPNs are the solution to deal with most of the man-in-the-middle attacks. Um, you can see here that the, the red stream basically is the virtual channel created through a public network. But because it's encrypted, it means that you can't actually access it. Now, it is also worth noting that not all VPNs or virtual private networks are use encrypted channels, um, but it is a thing. Yeah, this is sort of you know, a piece of tech to be aware of. And that's it for this one. Thank you for your time.